Welcome into Press Box Live. I'm Stan the Fan Charles of Press Box and PressBoxOnline.com. And with me on Mondays, and if it is a Monday, it's Luke Jackson, the managing editor of Press Box. Why don't you wave to the people so they know who you are? I am waving right now to Luke the people. Jackson. That's Luke Jackson. With thumbs up. With thumbs managing up. Managing editor. No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not that's yet. not yet. Okay. Okay. Let me plug that. Okay. And the the great Ross Grimsley, no, well, wore number you, 39 with the Baltimore <laughs> Orioles, because I see it on the board behind him. And I take it it's not Eddie Watts' jersey. Uh, no, no. And I quickly changed to 48. 48. I remember yeah, you. Were I, I, I made a trade with uh, uh, oh, the coach, uh, third base, not third base coach. Ralph Rowe? No, no, uh, not Ralph. Uh, I can't think of his name. All right. Not important. Jim Fry. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Jim Fry. Right. I'm George Stuart Staller. Jesse. I'm George <laughs> Staller. All right. Yeah, right. yeah, that's Corbin yeah. Burns. We could tell people that they're Corbin Burns jersey, but it's <laughs> not. Uh, let me tell you folks a little bit about the show. And first of all, we are glad you're watching us and would appreciate it each Monday if you would like, follow, and share our show, whatever day you you view it. We really appreciate that. Again. If you'd like it, follow it, and share our show. That would be a big help to us. We're brought to you by the folks at Atman's at the new location. If you're craving that classic New York deli experience, look no further than the new Atman's deli in Baltimore's Harbor Point. Corned beef piled high, hand-rolled bagels, and something different, a bar. That's right. Atman's has food and drink specials every day of the week. Now open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang out at the bar for the next O's game. Atman's Deli, an authentic taste of Baltimore tradition since 1915. Find them at Harbor Point or visit atmansdeli.com. Of course, we're brought to you by expert and award-winning A.J. Michaels mm -hmm. Heating, Air Conditioning, Plumbing, and Home Performance. What company makes your home more energy efficient, kills all allergens, and viruses and qualifies you for as much as a six thousand dollars in rebates that would be aj michaels turn to the experts aj michaels and carrier at ajmichaels.com and about those thumbs up we are also brought to you by the costas inn where all thumbs are up on dining at the costas inn we'll tell you about that experience midway through the show uh let's start Again, with where a lot of the lot of the focus right now is for Oriole fans on this pitching st staff. And Luke, I'll start with you because I wrote a piece today that you did an expert job at making me look good by editing it. But I thought I hit on the positives about this pitching staff right now have to be the work of Albert Suarez, Sir Anthony Dominguez, and the revelation that was. Kate Povich on Saturday night. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And where would this team be without Albert Suarez? Yeah, I mean, he's just been terrific, particularly since he re-entered the rotation uh, due to the injury to uh, Grayson Rodriguez. He stepped right in, fired five shutout innings in Toronto that day, and has totally continued on that path since then. And yesterday was probably his best start of the year. Um, and I, I would love to ask Ross this. Uh, so he probably started the game 91 to 93. And then by the fifth and sixth inning, he's firing 96, 97 mile an hour bullets at the top of the zone that third time through the order, the Red Sox can't pick up on. Um, so that's my old, question that's is, old school, Ross. That's isn't a, it? Yeah. So my Pretty question to you is, <laughs> really? is how is he able to do that? And why is his stuff look better as a starter, particularly as the, his game go along than it does in the bullpen? Yeah, no, that's uh, just like Stan said, that's kind of old school thing. You start out and uh, uh, Gibson was one of the best at doing that. You know, Bob Gibson, he would, uh, you guys get on base and he'd crank it up another notch. And uh, a, lot, a lot of your, you know, Ryan would do it and give you that extra zip. But uh, that, that's how you guys would give you, you know, seven, eight, nine innings, uh, an outing. And some, uh, you know, they'd go, like Bob Gibson did that one year, he had several games of nine innings or more. But uh, yeah, you just uh, you you save it to when you need that 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 strikeout or that swing and miss pitch. That's when you go to a little bit extra. 
a little bit, maybe a sharper breaking ball. Uh, it, it's a cat and mouse game. It, it's uh, and, and what it comes down to that they look for one speed a lot of times, and then they get another one. That's what the game's all about is changing speeds, mixing pitches, mixing eye levels, in, out, up, down. Uh, and that that's pretty much what it is. And that's kind of an old school way. You'll get more innings and you'll be fresher and you won't use as many pitches as many. And, and you won't use as many, uh, uh, max effort pitches, which takes a little bit out of your arm, especially, uh, in the dog days, which are now mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, so you'll have some juice at the, you know, at the end, end of the you know season when the playoffs start as well. Yeah, what, yeah. You guys, what, yeah. what do you guys think of what I put in the article today, and it's there for you to read at pressboxonline.com. He's making probably the minimum this year, right? Yep. Luke, yep. He wanted to come back to the States to pitch. This is a guy who I'm guessing was making more like $2 million a year over in Japan. Or I think Korea. it was like a million and a half, something like million that. Yeah. So what do you think of my idea of going to him locking instead of worrying about i mean they're not going to sign burns i, I right. didn't know it and but i think this group will pay 20 million dollars for a starter you know in free agency or a, a trade acquisition but how about locking up the back end guy for two years at like five million dollars and make do the right thing by albert suarez and also do the right thing for your team knowing you got him next year yeah, I think he's under club control. That's the best I can tell that he's under club control, that he did not sign a contract that allows him to be a free agent. He has pitched in two other major league seasons. This but is his he third. could choose to go back to, to Korea or uh, he could. He could. Yeah. Um, and so to your point, the the idea that you mentioned was like a two year deal, five million, almost like a thank you. Uh, and to set yourself up as a as a team as well. Yeah. Uh, and I guess his leverage would be, I can go back to Korea. I don't think he's going but to do that. I don't think he's going to get three, four million dollars in Korea. But like I said, as far as we know, he's under club control. And we know how this team operates, that they're not going to guarantee money to a guy who's 30, going to be 35 and 36. They're, they're just yeah. not going to do that. I think it's a, I think it's a I fair would. idea. I, I would. Uh, uh, if if they get to the World Series and the playoffs, uh, that's his that's his bonus right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There you <laughs> that's go. That's what he gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it'd be great to I mean to have, and he'll probably be back. Like like you said, I didn't know if he was a free agent or not. I mean, I think he'll be back regardless. Yeah. I'm just well, saying, I, and they'll yeah. probably give him for for relatively what he's making. He'll probably make 1.5 next year. Yeah, I'm guessing, but I I would do the right thing and say hey we really want you here for two more years and give them 2.5 a year for two years five million yeah, they're not going to spend money that they don't have to yeah <laughs> you know that but and then they'll go chasing a guy like trevor rogers oh at, yeah you know, oh, at the, at the I mean, deadline you, you need, he's uh, got another year with the team yeah, the, the, yeah this suarez is a guy that can pitch out of a pin emergency starter and he might be your, your fourth or fifth starter uh, next year, you don't know how things are going to pan out, but right. he's done a, he's done a really good job this year. Uh, that was uh, you know unexpected, so to speak, and uh, he stepped up when you really need to, and hopefully he can continue doing this because you don't know uh, how these other guys are going to come back from these injuries. Luke, did you have another question for Ross? I kind of interrupted in there. Oh, I so Suarez was also very effective using the high cutter yesterday and. You know what I'm talking about, the cutter, the cut fastball, one or two baseballs above the zone, right? And Zach Eflin is really, really good at it. And yeah. uh, Albert Suarez did the same thing to the Red Sox, that high 88-mile-an-hour cutter. It's a little change of pace, about one or two uh, baseballs above the zone. Why is that so effective? Why does it look like almost like a disappearing cutter? Well, that, that's, I mean, pitching up in the zone uh, in this day and age, this era of the game, uh, you know, once, especially if you can keep the ball down and then elevate, elevate it and change the eye level and, uh, and the cutter, I mean, I, Hey, if you got command of the cutter, it, you do it, do it, you know, but if you don't, you can't throw the cutter in the middle of the plate or even right. on the plate really, because they jump all over them. It's just like a, a nothing fastball, but you can elevate it. The best they're going to do is, uh, pop it up or swing and miss it in most mm -hmm. cases. But, uh, uh, that that's the whole deal. That's uh, with uh, uh, the left-hander pitched the other. The, the kid pitched the other day. 
I mean, he was down more in the zone, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get to him in a minute. Yeah. But that, and then he, pitched the, then he elevated the ball, which is, I mean, you see a lot of guys do that. That's like pitching inside and uh, to establish the outside part of the plate and vice versa. It's like I said, it's a cat and mouse game. But if you get a chance to elevate the ball uh, above the hands, you got a chance for a swing and miss or a pop up in this uh, this day and age because they're uh, they're trying to uh, uppercut and hit the ball out of the park. I, I did in the piece that I wrote today on PressBoxOnline.com about the pitching successes and woes of the Orioles. I did it. I did it about Suarez, then Dominguez, and then Povich. But I want to stick with the starting pitcher. You alluded to Povich. That was by far his best outing as a major league pitcher. And he had one other real good outing against Atlanta. But this time, uh, Ross, I thought he really showed focus and he pounded the strike zone where in his previous 37 innings, he'd walked 23 batters. The other night he fit six in the third and walked zero and struck right. out six. You know, I, I evidently uh, I read something where he talked to somebody uh, when he went down, and obviously, you know, walk as, as many guys as it is. You you tend, especially when you when you're a young kid, you come up, you pitch away from contact. You do that, you're going to fall behind. You're going to try to make better pitches than you have to. And what he did, obviously, he took that to heart. Talking to somebody, he became aggressive. He threw more strikes. He stayed down the zone. He's got four pitches that he mixed up. Uh, the big slow curveball. He's got the the hard the harder breaking ball, the fastball, the changeup. And what was impressive uh, for me seeing what he did more consistently, he stayed down in the zone. And when you do that, that ball up in the zone, no matter how hard you throw, you know you plays you're a little down, bit down, there. down, and all of a sudden it's up here. They're not looking for it, and they got to be really quick uh, to get on it. And he was able to do that. And when they're looking uh, fastball, he'll throw that breaking ball and then throw that change up. So he mixed his pitches. But the big thing, he threw a lot of strikes. He stayed down in the zone and he moved the ball. He was more aggressive in the strike zone. Luke, we, we haven't talked about this much. I get the sense that some of the pitchers on this staff work better with James McCann as the catcher. Uh, do you give McCann some credit for Povich the other night? Oh, sure. Uh, veteran uh, catcher. Uh, congratulations to him on his 10 year years. mark. That's that's a big time. Uh, that's a that's a big time. Thing. That's Ross Grimsley territory. That's yeah. That's Ross Grimsley territory. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I think Ross would uh, be a much better person to ask than me how a veteran catcher can catch uh, can uh, can help a, a young pitcher. But the thing I see with Povich is that sometimes it seems like he's so focused on throwing the ball over the white part of the plate that he becomes robotic. And on Saturday, I thought that he was a lot more rhythmic in his delivery and he was just seeing what McCann called or hearing what McCann called, I should say, and firing away. And I just, I, I like the delivery uh, on Saturday and when he can get that breaking ball over that sets up a lot of things because he got a good breaking ball. It's a big curveball, and when he can get that, and he also it seemed to me mixed in that sweeper a lot more than he had in the past, and so he really was throwing like three or four pitches for strikes. And when you throw three or four pitches for strikes, you can make a lot of catchers look good, Stan. That's a lot <laughs> of weapons to play with, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's a good that's a good lineup that he was facing, and it was yeah, just, it really. Was, uh, it was very optimistic for the remainder of this season that he can come up again and do that, uh, you know, and we'll see how it plays out. Um, look, the fans have been clamoring a lot of this season that they wanted Ke Craig Kimbrell gone. He's not gone, but he's kind of gone from the closer role for now. Uh, and it looks like it's been handed, uh, while not seamlessly, uh, and with much consternation, but it's hard to believe, guys. Craig Kimbrell hadn't had a save since July the seventh, uh, and now it looks like it's Sir Anthony Dominguez's job. Uh, Ross, um, do you believe that Kimbrell can still offer some value to the team? 
Hey, he's going to have to, uh, you know, probably pitch his way back into that position or into a uh, position. Or into a position of trust. Again. Exactly. When the game's on the line, he's not going to get that opportunity until he shows maybe two or three times that he can do that. You know, and that's uh, and that, that, that's very possible. Everybody goes through, uh, you know, a situation during the season usually where, you, you know, you're going to pitch real well, you're going to pitch average, and you're going to pitch poorly. And the idea is to how to get by when you're pitching poorly and average. I, how do I get by doing that? But the thing that uh, when he – I think I saw him pitch the other day when he was up in the zone so much, and he just went fastball, 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 wouldn't throw nothing else. And it was in the same spot every time, I mean, you know, mostly every time. And he never made an adjustment. And that's something that a veteran guy, uh, you know, really needs to be able to do and know how to do it. But, and he just kept, usually when you're, you're up in the zone with a fastball, you go to a breaking ball and that helps you get down and, yeah. and get over your front side a little bit more, but he never did that. And he, he did, he didn't do it very often, but th well, this is what? something that, that he's going to have to, uh, earn the trust of uh, of Hyder to get back in that position where he was once at. Let me ask you a question, Ross, because you've been there, uh, and then I'll get Luke's take on this, but I've talked about this extensively. There takes some finesse in not overusing a closer, but there takes a level of, of sophistication <laughs> to not underusing a guy and letting him go six or seven days between outings and then bringing them into the ninth inning of a one or two run game. And Hyde did that with him from July the 7th to July the 14th from, from the 20 appearances before, including July the 7th, his earned run average over 22 innings was 0 0.43. He uses him. He doesn't use him against the Cubs. Doesn't use him Friday or Saturday against the Yankees. Brings him back on Sunday, and since then his ERA has been ten thirty eight. Now I'm not blaming Brandon Hyde for the ten thirty eight. Is there a connection between the underutilization of a guy who at this point is kind of a a pitching artist that's finessing his way around things? Yeah, you know when you. When you go uh, several days without pitching, even as a starter, you go, uh, you know, I went 21 days uh, toward the end of my career in Montreal without pitching. And yeah, what but there happens, were reasons for that. Yeah, because I wasn't getting anybody <laughs> out. <laughs> but and my point is, what happens is guys get so strong, they think they can throw harder than they're capable of throwing. Right. And it, it's a built-in excuse. You know, I, didn't, I hadn't pitched in so long. Now I'm going to be terrible. You're already putting a negative. And I just was able to figure out a way to work on the side and be prepared when I got the opportunity. And I, I did on there. I got the opportunity to pitch five innings against the Mets and, and put up zeros. And that's because I didn't try to do something I wasn't capable of doing. And it just so happened it works, but that, that's something you got to tell yourself. And it's, it's really, it's really tough. And Kimbrell's, uh, a position seven days a long time yeah as a as a reliever when you're out there probably sometimes every other day every third day but you go you go four days five days or longer without pitching now that kind of takes the edge off and, and you're, you start and doing fairness, things that you normally don't do in fairness i mean again i said it leaves needs a level of sophistication luke it's been three or four times he's gone three or four days now without being used and you can say, well, he'll be used when he gets people out, but it's sort of like a fulfilling a prophecy that you, if you don't believe a guy's going to get people out and you don't use them, it backs up and he's really not going to get people out. If a reliever comes with an instruction manual, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Just get people out, man. Yeah, really. I mean, honestly. I'm so just, not, I, I mean, not, I, you're not siding with me on that. No, no. Okay. All right. You know what I was saying, Stan, you know, you so, go. So, so what, what happened when he was used all those times in that 20 appearances and his ERA is 043 with no home run? He was pitching well. He's getting people out. Yeah. <laughs> and, and why did you, why did you go seven days without using them? 
There well, you, I'll yeah. tell you why. Because because um, we weren't, we didn't have the lead. Right. That's what, I, it takes, and, that's what and, I mean and, when and, I say like, so, level and, of sophistication to use a guy by Wednesday. But or, that was six weeks ago. That's so. It's that's a long time yeah, ago. You, you, you could you can look at the the pitching log now. He's gone four times, about three times, and he went those seven days or six days. But you, I, I, that was, I mean, for me, that was a while ago, and that certainly might excuse him not pitching well against the Yankees on that Sunday. But I, I it's also, you don't want to use him three straight days. So it, it used to be easier when relievers would go three straight days to get him a reliever a little work and still have him the next two days if right. you need it. Now, if you want to get somebody work, you only have him that next day, and then he'll need another day off. I just... I I just think that as you mentioned, he just turned 36, and I think there are a lot of miles on that odometer. And I think asking for high level performance out of him for six straight months at this point is a tall ask. It's pretty tall, and they yeah. and they knew that going in. But and they knew that when honestly, they up, honestly, they, they were a little bit desperate for Sir Anthony Dominguez. Right, and honestly, this offseason they, they were probably a little bit desperate to find someone with closing experience. Yeah. And he certainly has closing experience. Yeah. And he was really good for them for a two month stretch. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we'll see if he can find it. I mean, that would certainly help the Orioles if he could find it. The one thing I will yeah, say. He doesn't have to go back to being the closer. He has no. to right. be, would be just great if Get he people could out. Trust them in the seventh inning of a game. Right. And it can also Dan. be now, it can also be a game when we're behind, but just don't let three more runs off. Right. You know. <laughs> You know, the, the other thing with him sitting for uh, five, six, seven days, it, it it's on, him. on your head. It's on him as well. Yeah. To find to something to do over that period of time to stay sharp when he gets his opportunity. Fair, fair enough. Know, I don't know. I don't know what he's do, what he does or what he doesn't do, but I'm saying that, that that's on your shoulders to do something, to stay prepared and to go out and be ready when you get called on because I mean, you're you're a big part, or was a big part of this bullpen, and they they could really use your your help. When you get your brains beat in like he has over these last ten innings or nine and a third innings, what's the mindset though? When you know the manager now isn't going to you, yeah. how do you restore confidence in yourself? I tell you, you have to you have to break it down in, in little steps. You know, you get a guy out, now I get the next guy out. You make a good pitch, I'm gonna make another good pitch. You know, it's just it's baby steps. You can't you can't jump way over here when you gotta take care of this right here. And you can't worry about what's what's happened in the past. You gotta go with the now and then, and you know, the future will take care of itself itself, learn from the past. But he's a you know, he's a guy that's an experienced guy. Yeah. And uh Hey, you, you get knocked around. You you, you will get defensive at time and and yeah. pitch away from contact. And uh, but yeah, I mean that, that's something that you you take little steps. I mean, it could be in the bullpen. You could be do something in the bullpen. But again, you have to that time off in between your appearances, and it, you're you're not pitching for a week, five days. Come up There's something. things you've got to do in the bullpen, throwing on the side. Or, or whatever to stay ready to to get back to where you should be, and that's uh that that that's really tough. But you gotta that, that's what you gotta do. All right. What about the job, uh, Luke, that Sir Anthony Dominguez has done? Oh, where would they be without him? Yeah. Uh, the swap of Austin Hayes for Sir Anthony looks like uh, a really positive one for the Orioles, and they needed more velocity on the back at the back in their bullpen, and he has certainly provided that. It's ninety eight to one hundred. Uh, with a good slider. So uh, his, as Kevin Brown was saying on the uh, broadcast yesterday, the expected numbers in Philadelphia were a lot better than his actual numbers. And the uh, Orioles were betting on the upside and betting on the track record too. This is a yeah. guy who's uh, gotten uh, hitters out at a high level uh, really since about 2018 or 19. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, he's, he's looked like that guy so far uh, for the Orioles. There's one irony in that is that the Orioles got a guy they jumped and got Kimbrel, who had mm -hmm. become the, you know, the the object of disdain by the Philadelphia fans, and now we got another guy who was the object of disdain in Philadelphia. Sir Anthony was not that popular this year and the end of last year, uh, and he's he's refound himself here. I've seen that 
with relief pitchers so many times where they get a second a second chance in a new location and they get the job done. And it does seem like his velocity maybe ticked up a touch with the Orioles, maybe a touch. So yeah, he looks really good. Okay. Uh let's do the uh Costas in spot and we'll come back and talk a little bit. We'll preview this uh, series against the Mets. Uh, the Costas Inn, located at 4100 North Point Boulevard, been there for over 50 years. That's a long time. That's over five decades they've been at the same location, Costas Inn. Uh, they've got great nightly specials on the weeknights, Monday through Friday. Crabs every night of the week, all year long. Uh, and uh, you can eat in or take out. You can do curbside still at the Costas Inn. You can call them or, or order online at costasin.com. Pay for it online. You don't even have to get out of your car if you're still a little nervous about being inside with people. The Costas Inn will bring the food out. It's always immaculately packed. There's a zillion reasons to go to the Costas Inn, and you've just heard a couple of them, but we're going to give you six more reasons to go to the <laughs> Costas Inn. Thumbs up to the Costas Inn from the guys here on the uh, Baseball Talk podcast, Press Talk Live. Uh, getting back to talk to the Orioles, talk about the Orioles. Um, the, the lineup right now, um, boy, when Santander sat yesterday, that lineup did not look that ferocious uh but they ended up getting home runs out of rutchman first one in a good while and gunner hit one again uh luke your thoughts on the, the lineup right now because he looks pretty set on you know o'hearn mountcastle at first holiday henderson and urias the catching is going to be a little bit of a mixed bag with rutchman and mccann uh and then the outfield it looks like it's going with Kowser, Mullins, and Santander. Although we face three left-handers, you think we'll see a little Austin Slater at City Field? Yes, Austin Slater's in the lineup tonight, and I suspect he'll be in the lineup the next two days. As no Mullins? As no, no Mullins, Mullins uh, Kowser in center. Kowser in center. That's what so, I thought it would be. And I do think that Mullins will get at least one start. Yeah. At, at some point in this series against the Mets. So uh, to your original point, yeah, they could use Santander getting going a little bit. I think he's like four for his last 32, something like that. A um, few too many pop-ups from him. Uh, he was just out in front of a pitch that he probably thinks he should have hit for a grand slam on Saturday, just out in front of that. So if they can get him going a little bit, um, that would be good for the Orioles. Um, Gunner has been great. Uh, over, I think he hit four home runs uh, this past homestand. So he's up to 33 uh, home runs, and now he's uh, knocking on uh, Santander's door in terms of the home run numbers. But, uh, yeah, so July was not kind uh, to Rutschman, right? Uh, he's been much better in August, and they need probably need more power from him, uh, which is what we saw yesterday. Had a big home run. They need more of that from Madley, uh, especially – since they're not going to get Jordan Westberg back until late September if he does come back. So, unfortunately, uh, we saw today that Austin Riley is out six to eight weeks with the same, looks like the same thing that Westberg had, which was a broken hand on a pitch up and in. You're seeing that more and more, Ross, um, that there's a premium on velocity, there's not a premium on command, and you got no sticky stuff to keep the ball where you want it to go. And so that means that really good players like Jordan Westberg and Austin Riley are on the shelf. Yeah. What, 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 are, the, what are most of these guys, what these most, most of these hitters do, they dive out across the plate and swing for the fences. That's the thing. That, that's the, uh, the era that you're in now. And Hey, the ball comes inside. It don't have to be in that much and they're going to get you. And that's uh but you got you to come in. You just can't stand there and let right. the guys swing for the fences. And every now and then, the guys are going to get uh, dorked. And, uh, you know, it's, so, it's been the hands, the hands, forearm, and uh, and what have you. It's getting but dorked, the, like, sort of like tallywag? Yeah, tallywhacked. Tallywhacked. <laughs> you get dorked. Yeah. 
No, but the, the guys, I mean, the pitchers, they, uh, you know, they're not going to just let you stand there and swing for the pitches on every, on every pitch. They're going to keep you honest and come inside and it don't have to be that far in. And uh, that, that's what happens. You got guys get, uh, guys get dorked. <laughs> so tonight it's, um, it's a battle of the left-handers, Trevor Rogers against David Peterson. Tomorrow's Kramer versus Quintana. And then on Wednesday afternoon, it will be – hold on, I just had it here. I think it's, it's Eflin be, and Manaya, right? Manaya, yeah. It's Manaya against uh, Eflin. Uh, that's a good matchup. Um, Ross, Eflin, I want to get back to him for a second. I find a, a lot of joy watching him pitch. I just – I enjoy his methodology, uh, the way he attacks, and the strike throwing. I find is so refreshing yes. uh, from him. And I, that's exactly what the, uh, what the program read about him. You know, he's a strike thrower. He's going to be around the plate. Uh, he's not going to walk many guys. And that is exactly what the, the guy has done. And pitching in Camden Yards now is uh, you can be aggressive and go after hitters. And, uh, you know, you get behind the count, you can go, here you go, hit it. And a lot of times it's going to be fly balls or, or ground balls, but uh, they have to put a charge in it to get it out uh, in Camden now, especially the left field. Right field a little, little bit different, but he's a guy, I mean, uh, he couldn't have stepped in at a, a better place and and helped his staff out. And that's uh, uh, really good to see. Um, Ross Rogers, I know we've only seen him the three times he's pitched for the Orioles. Unimpressive to date but not horrible. The first one was a bad outing. The last two, they just left you wanting a little bit, something something more. Is that all he's got? There must uh, I, be something because yeah. he, had, he had nine, ten outings in a row right. with a three ERA or, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, I know. He, he's a guy that uh... – Again, command is the biggest thing in the world, and that's something that there's uh, uh, not a big emphasis on it uh, now. You got to try to velocity. He might be a guy that's trying to throw too hard. I mean, we saw um, saw it happen to Means. He tried to start overthrowing. Not only yep. did it affect him, but it hurt him, and that was the start of his problems. So hopefully, uh, maybe this guy is going. Uh, max effort and it's affecting his command. And obviously it looks that way because he's uh, a lot of balls in the middle of the plate, a lot of balls up in the zone, spinning, breaking balls, or, uh, you know, or hangers. Uh, it's just a guy that uh, he's, he looks like, uh, and he, he throws kind of from a, a three quarter, low three quarters, it looks like. And if you're not down the zone with that, it's going to come in flat and they're going to just jump all over it. And that's kind of what, what has happened. Uh, they're I, gonna I think they're going to tally whack. They're going to tally whack it, and and he's going to hit somebody and dork them right in the head. <laughs> 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 no, he, yeah. I, I think he's a guy that I mean, uh, once they, uh, I think the the uh, pitching uh, gurus get a look at him, and they may, might be able to make some adjustments with him and uh, maybe get him to uh, you know be a little more aggressive in the strike zone keep the ball down, change speeds a little bit more and possibly not try to throw the ball uh, 110 miles an hour or try to throw I, it that hard. I would say they've got two pitchers that need work, and that's Rogers and Soto. How much oh. work can you do? How much real work can you do now? Or is it something <laughs> like you almost say to them, this is something we can address in the off season." In other words, how much can you rework somebody in the middle of a season? Well, I mean, it's it's pretty tough now since every game is important. It seems yeah. like, yeah, uh, you know, and and that's really tough to uh, uh, to do because you know you need you need the bullpen guys almost every night now, and uh, to to start to do something on the side. Uh, if you do too much, that guy's down for that night. And like I said, you need these guys. Uh, regardless of how they've been pitching, you need somebody to go out there and hope he's on that particular night. But uh, yeah, it's tough to work on things now uh, during the season with the, with the games and the uh, 
the the shortage of effective pitchers. That's yeah. another thing that you got to – and these guys, you know, uh, Soto has a good arm. It's just a matter of throwing it over the plate yeah. and getting guys to swing at it. You know, that, that that's the big thing. But, uh, again, there's little things possibly you could do. Uh, you know, looking at the video of him, he's a, you know, a max effort guy, but find find it a way to throw the ball uh, in the strike zone. So at least you'll get a strike, you know, but it's, uh, yeah, it's tough to work on things. He it looks like point. a guy I would try and break down his delivery and simplify it. You know, he's so, yeah, so okay. over. He's yeah. a big guy. Sometimes it's together. Other times yeah. it's not. Yeah. And that's a that's a feel thing for a, for a pitcher. And once you once you do it and you have success, then you know, well, how did you do that? What did you do to do that? You know, and show it to them. And there's several different things you can do, but it's kind of tough to work on things now during the season uh when every game's important. Luke, uh, a comment from you on Rogers, and then I want to ask you what uh about what Hyde talked about at the end of his press conference yesterday. Go ahead. So with Rodgers, we saw him when he was at his best in 2021, and he was 94 to 96. He is no longer 94 to 96. He's more like 90 to 92. Um, but the big issue for him so far, he's probably been a little bit, uh, bit unlucky with balls in play, but the big issue has been the two-strike pitch not being able to put hitters away with two strikes and giving up hard contact uh, when he has the advantage in the count. We'll see if that uh, he can improve upon that tonight. Uh, if he can, that'll go a long way to having a good outing. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much what I've seen so far is that the two strike pitch is really, yeah. really hard. That, that has been his big problem. Uh, Hyde at the end of his press conference, basically when it started to be questioned about his bullpen, he said, look, I'm using three guys now that I, you know, I'm comfortable with, and it's unsustainable to use the same three guys every night. Right. Uh, and he said it. Uh, and those three guys, of course, are Dominguez, CNL Perez, and Cano. And Cano hasn't really been great for him of late. Well, um, he's also been used four or five. Yeah. So, yeah. and the fourth and fifth days wasn't very good. Yeah. So he's probably been used too much. Okay. So, um, but that's where Soto and Kimbrell, it really hurts to have two guys that you just in close ball games want to use. Right. Right. And you I use, do you think, use another guy. Right. What's and that? I do, What's that, Ross? I say you, you, you use one of those guys, you got to use another guy. Right. Right. At, right. At this point in time, which is to clean up his mess. Too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I do think the reluctance to uh, not use Soto, to, or I should say the reluctance to use Soto, uh, put Birch Smith in a bad situation on Friday and Saturday. Yeah, because he's not a guy that's supposed to face the lefties. He's not supposed to face Raphael Devers. Right. And and he goes three straight days, and the third straight day he faces Raphael Devers and he gives up a tank. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's just kind, kind of what happens. You know? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh, entertaining and informative as usual. We'll talk uh, to Eric Garfield on Thursday, and uh, us guys will be back together next Monday. All right. Sound good. Sound We're good. Been brought, good. We've been brought to you by AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning. Uh, turn to the experts at AJ Michaels and Carrier at AJMichaels.com. Brought to you by, of course, the new Atman's Deli in Harbor Point. Check them out. They're sitting out open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dine in, grab takeout, or hang out the bar for the next O's game at Atman's Deli in Harbor Point. And then lastly, but not leastly, uh, we've been brought to you by the Thumbs Up guys at the Costas Inn. Six thumbs up from our panel. That does it for tonight. O's and the Mets uh, shortly from City Field in New York. Bye for now.